This is Donald Solomon. Donald was a part-time police officer for a decade before becoming the police chief of East Washington, Pennsylvania in 2009. However, his behavior drew the attention of federal authorities following his divorce from his wife in the same year. He was investigated by a confidential informant and was recorded discussing the possibility of securing a 4-kilogram cocaine deal for which they would each be paid $500 per kilogram. Donald was caught in a sting operation in September 2011, during which he agreed to provide protection for a 10-kilogram cocaine shipment while wearing his police uniform. He was paid $8,800 for his involvement in the drug transactions. Former police chief Donald Solomon told undercover agents he was the best cop money could buy and the videotapes showing actual drug transactions where he was using his uniform, his police car, and uh, operating in a fashion to protect the transaction and then escort uh, the perpetrators to Interstate 79 was beyond chilling. purchased law enforcement tasers for a purported drug dealer to use those tasers in collection activities uh, were shocking to say He pleaded the least. guilty to three counts of extortion in January 2013 and was sentenced to 11 years in prison. However, his sentence was reduced in 2017 after a federal judge acknowledged his efforts to get his life back on track while in prison. This is Willem Demby Jr., Demby a former Lorain County Jail Corrections officer for the last 12 years, called 911 in August 2011. He made the call from the kitchen of his home in Grafton around 1.30 a.m. on a Thursday morning. Demby is friends with the poor dispatcher who took the call. She seemed happy to hear from him at first, but then he dropped a bomb on her. The call goes on for nearly six minutes with Demby keeping his calm the whole time, explaining that he wouldn't hurt anyone else. His big concern was that someone would take good care of his dog, who was with him. His four-year-old son wasn't there at the time. Until sheriff's deputies arrived at the scene, no one knew what to think. It turns out investigators say that his 33-year-old wife, Holly, was actually stabbed to death. Holly was chased by her husband Demby, with a combat knife in their home. She managed to escape to the bathroom, but he broke through the door and stabbed her six times before she fell from a first-floor window. He attacked her again after the fall and stabbed her twice in the neck. You cut her throat twice! You stabbed her eight times! You cold-blooded fucking killer! Fuck! I've had enough of the bullshit! Demby was sentenced to life in prison. This is Daniel Ken Holtzclaw. Daniel Ken Holtzclaw was a former police officer. On June 18, 2014, Daniel finished his shift and was making his way home. On the way, he pulled over 57-year-old Janie Liggins, who was driving without a valid license. Liggins then reported to police that the officer who had pulled her over had sexually assaulted her in the back of his patrol car. In December 2015 Daniel was convicted of multiple counts of rape, sexual battery, forcible oral sodomy, and other sexual charges while working for the Oklahoma City Police Department. Daniel was convicted of 18 counts involving eight different women. According to the police investigators, Daniel abused his position as an officer by running background checks to find information that could be used to coerce victims into sex. During the trial, the defense questioned the victim's credibility during cross-examination, bringing up their criminal records. Of the 13 women who accused Daniel, several had criminal histories such as drug arrests, and all of them were African American. The prosecution argued that victims were deliberately chosen by Daniel for these reasons. Daniel pleaded not guilty to all charges. On December 10, 2015, he was convicted on 18 of 36 charges, and on January 21, 2016, he was sentenced to 263 years in prison. I encourage women to come forward and report this, and those that are friends of women who may have been victimized, to encourage them to come forward. And men who victimize women, this is what's going to happen to you. You will lock your... You will lock this is Michael Dotro. Dotro was a police officer with the Edison Police Department in New Jersey. In 2013, Dotro was involved in a dispute with a fellow police officer who had reported him for falsifying a police report. 
Dotro retaliated by setting fire to the officer's home, which resulted in significant damage but no injuries. Dotro was eventually arrested and charged with several crimes, including attempted murder, aggravated arson, and conspiracy. He was also accused of vandalizing a car belonging to another officer who had reported his misconduct. Dotro denied the charges and went to trial in 2017. During the trial, prosecutors presented evidence that Dotro had conspired with other police officers to carry out the arson, and that he had used his position as a police officer to access information that helped him carry out the crime. Dotro's defense team argued that the evidence against him was circumstantial and that he was being unfairly targeted by prosecutors. In the end, the jury found Dotro guilty of five counts, including conspiracy to commit arson, aggravated arson, and official misconduct. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison, with a minimum of 17 years to be served before he would be eligible for parole. This is Zachary Wester. Wester was a former deputy with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office in Florida, who was accused of planting drugs in people's cars during traffic stops. In 2018, several drivers came forward with complaints against Officer Wester, stating that he had planted drugs in their cars during traffic stops. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement FDLE, opened an investigation into the matter, and Officer Wester was placed on administrative leave. During the investigation, FDLE found that Wester had been using a variety of methods to plant drugs on innocent people, including using his own supply of drugs, planting drugs from other cases, and planting drugs from the evidence room. In fact, it was noted that Wester had an unusually high number of cases where he had turned off his body camera, leading to concerns about his behavior and motivations. He was really taking the time off camera to plant the drugs in the vehicle he pulled over. Then he would wrongfully arrest the person. One of the Wester's victims appeared in court today, Teresa Odom. Last three years, I've probably missed a year and a half of my grandbaby's life because of this. Um, I wish you no ill will, and you'll never know what you've done to me until you have children of your own. So, in August 2019, Officer Wester was arrested and charged with multiple counts of racketeering, official misconduct, fabricating evidence, possession of a controlled substance, and false imprisonment. He was later indicted on 52 counts, including 28 counts of racketeering. At trial, prosecutors presented evidence showing that Wester had been stopping drivers without probable cause, conducting illegal searches, and planting drugs on innocent people in order to make false arrests. They also presented testimony from several of his victims. In May 2021, a jury found Officer Wester guilty on 19 of the 67 counts against him. Wester was sentenced to 12 years in prison, 